Hey, how's it going? I'm fresh from my padded cell after the last run <clears throat> and have been instructed by my carers to try to take more control of my life, promote my own autonomy, find little things to be happy about and play Dark Souls 1 again. <laughs> that, that was on the list, I swear. Today, I have something a little different. Dark Souls has its fair share of weird and quirky weapons, as you might have seen in my past few videos. A crossbow specifically designed with a scope and the highest range in its weapon class that cannot zoom in. Short bows specifically designed for speed that force your character into a rigid standing animation just to fire a small arrow. The ultimate dark power in the whole of Lordran, learnt from a primordial god, drawing power from the abyss and described as being so horrifically strong an entire city had to be sacrificed to contain it. That does around 80 damage on a good day and only works sometimes. As you can probably tell, quirky and unique in Dark Souls, unlike the later games, typically means a heavy downgrade. But today I have something different. A pretty often overlooked weapon class, especially in PvE. Thrusting swords or rapiers. These little blades don't have much range, but attack extremely quick, deal almost exclusively thrust damage, and are generally incredible for reposting and backstabs. The pure amount of style you gain just from carrying one on your hip is palpable. So today I wanted to showcase that. I'm going to beat Dark Souls 1 with the most stylish, fancy and the most underrated weapon class, the Rapier. While I make an appropriate character, I'll go over the rules. First up, I can only deal damage with a rapier. Any rapier and any equipment slash spells are allowed, but my damage must come from a rapier. Second, all bosses must be beaten. Third, no exploits. That's all, just the usual. Anyways, on to the run. I make my way through the asylum, and after asking Miyazaki nicely, get the mail breaker. This is the weakest rapier in the game, and while it doesn't really matter considering I can get an enormous upgrade to this right after the Asylum, and the Asylum Demon is such a pushover anyway so it doesn't matter, it only felt right to start with the weakest. Anyways, I head off towards Firelink. Upon arriving in Firelink, my first order of business is my early game weapon of choice, the standard rapier. Bought from the Undead Merchant, it has decent damage, but its main qualities are exclusively thrust damage, a two hitting running attack that doesn't take much stamina, the speed of its attacks, and how deceptively long it is, just like me. After I buy the rapier, which by all rights is pretty large, and asking for more is kinda realistic, like this is an average size rapier, come on. I head back to Firelink, and down into the valley. Another possible weapon is right next to the elevator, the S-Stock. It does higher damage and reaches further than the rapier, but I hate how it looks, so I'd rather my fancy looking one to this much better one. Anyways, I head up to Darkroot Basin. The knight respectfully declines to fight me, so after taking out the lizard for a special reason later on, I head up to Andre. With the souls I'd collected so far, I upgrade my rapier to plus five. After that, I head into the parish. I unlock the firelink shortcut, take out the knight but get unlucky for a large titanite drop, grab the soul, then head up the stairs. I take out the rapier guy that blocks the stairs and for some reason he drops a rapier. I absolutely love that a 10% drop can take years to drop, but I get a random 2% drop whenever I don't need it. Anyways, with dual rapiers in hand, which I do have to admit look pretty cool, I enjoy how much range I have with the rapier. After the dark hand run, not needing to passionately kiss any enemy I want to deal damage to is such a good feeling. After freeing Lortrek, I decide to just go fight the gargoyles, because why not? They fold pretty easily, the plus 5 rapier with counter damage just absolutely steamrolls them. 
With a free bundle of 10k souls, I ring the first bell. After that, I once again forget the Homeward Bone, and I have a very lovely, very long stroll down to Firelink. After asking Lawtrek nicely to let me repost him, I grab the Dark Souls equivalent of the One Ring. The boost basically just lets me turbo upgrade my attack stats, and lets me not worry about my HP or stamina until the late game. Anyways, back up to the Berg. I grab the Lightning Resin and get a chunk from the Knight, which will immensely help my mental health later in the run. Then, after playing Prop Hunt with another Lizard, I head up to Taurus. As you can imagine, he's very difficult to beat. Solea greets me warmly, and after chatting with him for a bit, I unlock the shortcut and head down to the lower berg. The dogs, as per usual, don't care how fast my weapon is, but I make it to Capra eventually. I don't do enormous damage, but this sword is speedy enough that I can dodge it easily and keep up my damage without any struggle. Capra goes down first try, and after I buy some bones and one of each moss, again a secret for later on, I forget to unlock the shortcut and head down to the depths. I try to speedrun to the ember, but forgot how enormous of a skill issue I have. After very happily not taking the shortcut I forgot to open, I skedaddle down to the berg again and grab the large ember. My adventures in the depths end here for now, and after burning back to Firelink, I head down to Blighttown. After trudging through the swamp, I make it to the corner of VTuber Face Reveals for my favourite mechanic in any and every game, farming. I wipe out the entire population of the Blighttown slugs, slowly but surely working my way up to 9 large shards. I don't have enough by the time I kill them all, but luckily remember to grab the two large shards in the swamp, a true reflection of my immense game knowledge. After burning back, I upgrade my rapier to plus 10, then waste a homeward bone before heading back to Firelink. With my much better weapon in hand, it's time for the next chapter of my average sized rapier. I head down into New Londo, booking it straight towards the main building. I make it without much issue and gently take the key to the seal. After burning back to save myself the trouble, I unflood the city, opening the way to part two of the Titanite farming saga. The Dark Wraiths haunting the area have a 9% chance to drop a chunk, and half a percent to drop a slab, meaning for the next hour, this is my home. I quickly realise I am terrible at parrying their delayed attacks, and resolve myself to just backstab fishing. I just want to take this moment to say I love you. Whoever it was that commented I can just drop down here instead of taking the chip damage elevator, you genuinely have no clue how ridiculously helpful this is to know now. For all the trips I have to do now, and for the future. Whoever it was, you are amazing, and thank you. Anyways, as you can see, I'm not having a ton of luck getting a single chunk to drop. I only have 7 humanity, so the drop rate isn't as good as it could be, but the base drop rate is 8.74%, so why is none dropping? There are a total of 9 knights in the ruins, and I have to slowly kill them all, with maybe one chunk dropping every 15 knights. It physically pains me to know. I've got a 2% drop randomly with my second rapier, and yet this takes me so, so long. The one good thing is that the 1200 souls from each knight does add up, and I do get a decent pile of souls for when I can finally leave the ruins. I farm for so, so long, I think I genuinely went hollow at some point. At least the knights aren't miserable to farm, like the slow trudging in Blighttown Swamp, or those awful bugs in their Isolith Tunnel for red chunks. <laughs> Eventually, I finally get enough, and after fighting my way out with a curse, I leave the ruins behind for now, with 9 chunks, 62,000 souls, and a hollowed out husk of a brain. After I give him the comically large ember, Andre looks at me with abject pity as he upgrades my rapier to plus 14, and I stumble towards the berg again. Instead of going down to Quaylag, I remember how much pain she's caused me in the past, and head back to the asylum. I have a small to-do list here, for once. 
First up, I hand in the moss from earlier and get four twinkling titanite from the bird guys. I accidentally fall into the stray demon area, but kill him first try anyway, netting me a slab for the standard rapier's last upgrade. I embarrass both of the knights, then grab the peculiar doll after putting Oscar to rest. The poor guy did not deserve what he got, honestly. With the asylum fully cleared out, I head back to Andre. I fully upgrade my rapier, and with 20,000 souls saved, I buy the crest of Artorias and make my way into the garden. The butterfly gets pretty thoroughly squished, and I grab the divine ember for a certain boss fight later on. Next up, I head into the deep forest. I betray the forest hunters instantly, but I die right as the ninja does. I have a brief period of sobbing and throwing up before I realise the ring didn't despawn, and I get the ninja rolls I love so much. I head into fight Sif, and after grabbing the hornet ring, I beat her on the first try. If Dark Souls ever gets a remake, doing the DLC first should let you convince Sif to give you the covenant, since you already proved you can handle the abyss. The potential is there, and I'll be very, very unhappy if it isn't realised. Anyways, I head back to Andre, and pre-upgrade the other rapier I got. I don't have any shards to make it divine, but I only need one, and won't actually need the weapon for a while, so I forget about it for now. Also, if you're wondering why I went through the trouble of maxing out my rapier before fighting Quelag, it's because I absolutely hate her lava, and I wanted to obliterate her absolutely. I head down into Blighttown, and with gold pine resin, do just that. I ring the second bell and head back up to Firelink. Also, in case it isn't obvious yet, I've already hit the 40 softcat on dexterity and now all my levels are piling into intelligence. Not for spells, mind you, but something far more refined that I'll soon be getting. Time for sends. I make it to the top completely flawlessly, then run into an issue. You see, at the peak of Sen's fortress, there is arguably one of the absolute best boss melting weapons, and another piece I can add to my arsenal, but it's in a tower that I can't remember how to get to. <laughs> It takes me way too long, but after deeply meditating and praying for help from the gods before me, I finally find the ladder and take out Ricard, netting me his rapier. This rapier is ridiculously good, but I'm not using it. Purely out of pride, I don't want to use a weapon insanely good when there's an option that looks and feels cooler and more stylish. So into the back pocket for now it goes. Anyways, I head in to fight the golem, and he goes down pretty quickly against my damage. Then, with Twinkling Titanite overflowing from my pockets, I head up to the capital. And Orlando, the prettiest fake city of all time is not a challenge. My sword is so quick that the guardians die before their animations can finish, and I make my way through easily. After turning the bridge thing, I head onto the main floor, and after cutting my way through, I head into the painting. The first part is simple. I just run through, park all down, and make my way into the courtyard. I open the shortcut, then head down into the sewers. Bone wheels, my favorite enemy, are everywhere down here. And since they're my favorite, you can probably guess that I'm very happy that this is a cramped, dark space with an enemy that insta-kills me. I grab the NX key and open the tower door, but die right before the exit. I head back in, determined to not lose the 30,000 souls, but I am torn to cringe pissboy shreds right in front of them. Whatever, it's cool, I didn't even want them anyways, it's all good. Anyways, I make my way up to the Annex, and get one of my absolute favourite weapons in the game, Velka's Rapier. I can't use it just yet, so I'll save my explanation for why I like it when I can. I also grab the Black Cleric set, which unfortunately looks uglier than I thought it would. Oh well. With my to-do list in the painting finished, I head to Priscilla. Staring at her, I realise the person I have become. This silly, all bosses rule. It's meaningless. I don't need to kill to be stronger. I don't need to be this person anymore. Her words struck a chord in my heart, and I decide that I will be a better person and head out of the painting. Anyways, back to Anolondo. 
I dodged the demon spears due to my accelerated brain power and after embarrassing both knights, head inside the cathedral. Solaire waits by the bonfire, but I decide not to talk to him. Even if the sunlight in Anolondo is fake, it's still better than sending him down to the ruins. I then head towards the blacksmith. With all the twinkling titanite I'd gathered up to now, I have enough to fully upgrade Velka's rapier. Except I don't have enough souls. So I attack every single enemy within my line of sight. And after killing both the gargoyles, I finally have enough. Velka's rapier is not the best weapon in the game by a long shot, but my God, it's one of the coolest. It has a longer reach than the standard rapier, does a ton of magic damage, and since it has split damage, it does massive damage on backstabs and reposts, has a very nice color palette, and has a unique heavy attack, a double hitting slash that makes the letter V. While Ricard's rapier, which I also start wearing on my hip because the gold looks nice, is by far the best rapier, Velka's is much more fun to play with, and I prefer style over power. With my pocket nuke in hand, I head into face ONS. I die once after getting jump scared by Ornstein, but the reach, speed, and damage of Velka's rapier easily puts me into phase two. At first, I actually struggle to hit Super Ornstein. His legs make thrusting attacks hard to use, but the unique R2 is beyond perfect for this fight and does more than enough damage that O and S both eventually fall. The Leo Ring is excellent for thrust weapons, but since I'm using Velka's rapier and the ring only affects physical damage, it won't be too useful. Anyways, I head up to Guinevere. Now, if you think about it, a throwing knife is just a really, really small, weird looking rapier. So technically, I threw a rapier at Guinevere. Anyways, after taking out Gwendolyn's buddies and embarrassing the firekeeper, I set my sights on the femboy himself. He goes down easily, and my Eno Londo quota is finished. I head back to Firelink and try to do the clerics a favour by taking out Petrus, since the carrier of Velka's rapier takes on the role of the partner. They don't react well, however, and team combo me off the cliff. After crying enough to complete an outline of my body in my bedsheets, I decide that the first on my lord hit list is the kings. They're pretty resistant to magic, so I decide to rock the regular for this one. Again, thank you for the shortcut. The kings get absolutely melted and can't do much against stone armor. I have a few sticky moments and the kings get desperate and start spamming the nuke button, but in the end, they go down easily. I say hi to Karth, then hold him responsible for his sins, before heading up to Seath, who is next on my hit list. I pretty easily crush the soldiers with Velka's rapier, the heavy attack doing wonders at hitting their small hitboxes. After using up a ring just to spite Seath, I grab the prison key run through the study, grab the bonfire, and head down to the New Londo Ruins. Oh, oh, you thought I was going to just go and fight Seath? You thought I didn't want to absolutely obliterate him instead of just beating him? You thought wrong. Dragons are weak to lightning, and lightning is upgraded with Titanite chunks. You know what that means. I hate that the Duke's archives is so well developed, with such creepy lore behind it. The courtyard opening into the cave is such a cool image, and I hate how lame Seath is by comparison. Therefore, I decided the only time I will use Ricard's rapier is upgrading it with lightning, and using it on Seath out of spite. I buy some large shards at the giant, then run back to Andre so he can ascend it, then run back to the giant so he can ascend it. I don't have an extra slab for a plus five, but this will be more than enough. Then with lightning weapon in hand, I head back to the depths because I hate Seath and I'm not finished yet. 
I head back up to the berg. I can't remember where to jump down to get down to the depths, so I just very happily walk through the entire area, including the dogs. Once I'm in the depths, I save Pyroguy for his flame, then take out the gaping dragon after giving him something to gape on. Then to finish off, I head into Blight Town, obliterating everything in my way, and head for power within. I hope my audience has a proud dad moment for me, because I finally remember how to get behind the bug. Feeling very proud of myself, I head back to Firelink with my newfound power. Then, with all my tools together, I head towards Seath. For the first time in about three years, I get cursed and die, which makes me very happy. And then on my second try, I absolutely obliterate the poor excuse for a boss, even while being cursed. At this point, I've hit the soft caps for damage on all my weapons. So from here on out, I'm pretty much just trying to boost my stamina and health for late game. After I buy some purging stones from the undead lady, I head down to Nito. After skipping most of the catacombs, I head into the largest roadblock of the entire run. Moving on, I take out patches because I do not overlook sin and head down to Leroy. I backstab the poor guy and head towards Nito. I get team comboed once, as per usual, but on the next try, the Divine Rapier takes out Sans and Nito himself is absolutely stomped. One Lord left to go. I begin my descent at Firelink, running down through Blighttown and towards the Fair Lady. I know that the more humanity you give her, the more alive she becomes, but I still feel that it's better to put her out of her misery than prolong it for her to just recover a tiny bit. Anyways, I take out Exponential Cum and head towards the Fire Sage. I hit my head on a tree branch and die, somehow, and then beat him on my second try with ease. After that, it's my favourite boss, the Centipede. Dead. And that's all I'll say about that. This whole area honestly makes me sad. Both Dark Souls 1 and 2 deserve to have the potential of some areas, especially the gutter in Dark Souls 2, fully realised. Anyways, the Bed of Chaos helpfully shows me how to get down to the ground floor, and I beat her in a handful of lame tries. With everything on this side of the game finished, I begin the setup for the DLC, one of the most obtuse and aggravating parts of the entire game. Kill the Hydra easily, reset the game, kill the Golem, go to Jukes, get the Pendant, and finally, it's time for the DLC. The Guardian is up first. While it does get me once, thanks to the fascinating decision of the remaster to not include omnidirectional rolling, I overwhelm it with damage the next go around. After upgrading my health a bit and kindling the bonfire for the later few bosses, I head into the forest. Calamit gets absolutely melted with some early hits, and after dispatching his bodyguard, I head towards the elevator. I try to take out this lizard, but accidentally send the poor guy into the abyss. Despite my sins, I press on, saying hi to Mr. Not on PC, and head into Artorius.
I've got nothing to say, other than that Artorius is the most satisfying fight in the game. Anyways, on to Ulusil. I forget to get the Skull Lantern in the Catacombs, so I just decide to see how I go without it, since I hate backtracking. As for the enemies, they can't do much, and I obliterate everything on my path on the way to the chasm. The Rapier is so quick that it stops any enemy in their tracks, and the strong attacks put in work when the regular attacks can't. Manus invites me into his enormous chasm, and after I save Sif, I head in to face the Father of the Abyss himself. This fight is difficult, especially due to my lack of armor, but the Rapier has enough range to punish almost every attack, and with power within, Manus can't do a huge amount against me. I'm honestly glad I didn't bring the pendant, because dodging the black magic is so much more stylish. However, halfway through the fight, Velka's rapier gives in to the enormous punishment it's suffering. I frantically try to swap to Ricard's rapier while Manus hunts me down, but it does almost no damage against him. Then the standard rapier comes to my rescue. The hardest boss in the game folds against the rapier I got within 5 minutes of the run. I told you rapiers were underrated. Anyways, onto the dragon. After repairing Velka's rapier, Goff shows me how much better he is with the bow check, and I head towards the valley. Calamite, just like Manus, simply can't do anything. Velka's rapier, while not hugely damaging, is so fast and stamina efficient that I can punish almost any attack and still have time to dodge. With not much effort, Velka's rapier claims the life of another sinner. And then there was one. I say goodbye to Goff, one of the nicest moments in the game in my opinion, and head back to Firelink. I didn't talk to Crestfallen, so he still remains perfectly sane, as I say goodbye to him and breeze past Framped. I offer up the souls and head into the kiln. The knights fall easily to the Velka parry damage, and it does not take long for me to get to Gwyn. I still really struggle to get the timing down for the leap, but after killing me once, I cut Gwyn almost in half with a single parry, and soon after he falls as well. As much as I'd like to leave the kiln for the dark ending, the law requires I continue the toxic cycle, and I burn with the first flame. Now, I have to be honest, this run really did boil down to can I beat this whole anthill with this jug of boiling water, but I just wanted the chance to showcase Velka's rapier. It is such a cool weapon, its heavy attack makes it useful for literally any possible situation, and the split damage makes any critical hit stupidly powerful. It's so fun to use, and I just wanted to show it off. Before the video finishes up, I'll talk a bit about the best and worst parts of the run. The worst was definitely the farming. I absolutely despise it in any game, and the fact that it took several hours for a drop that was 10% just makes me want to cry. The best was easily Artorius. The rapier was quick enough to punish every attack, and the whole fight just felt like a well choreographed dance. That's all for the video. My next run it seems like is going to be a lot more painful, so if you enjoy seeing pure undiluted misery, then subscribe. <laughs> I hate to be every YouTuber on the planet, but comment and like if you enjoyed the video. It genuinely does help me a ton. Anyways, that's all. Have a good one.